Okay, it's my job to finish with a last uh, couple of comments. A number of speakers have referred to the fact that this is the largest amount of cuts put on working class people and our families for generations. Some £81 billion of cuts in welfare, which is going to affect those uh, claiming incapacity and disability benefits, those claiming housing uh, benefits, those claiming unemployment benefits, and those who currently provide the services for those benefits claims. We've heard about the tuition fees tripling and the axing of the £30 a week payment on the educational maintenance allowance. And we've also heard about cuts in council services. And it is a fact, John and I can debate this in other forums in more detail, but what's called a medium term financial strategy, which will go before the council on Tuesday afternoon, is for £100 million worth of cuts over the next three years. And in advance of that, 1,000 jobs have been asked to be voluntarily taken out of the uh, local authority uh, budgets by people volunteering for their own redundancy. 15% of non school staff, a lot of them will be low paid women workers. I, I, I am pleased at the pledge to pay those who have been underpaid through single status. But a lot of those women who will go in that 1,000 are women who've had no pay increase in the last five years by that exact same single status deal. And those who will be left behind will be expected to pick up all that extra work. It's a big challenge that's been put on working people. This government of Tories and Liberals have declared war on people of this city and today's demonstration is our first step in saying we will not accept those cuts. We're preparing the fight back. Thank you very much for coming. The second point a lot of people have made is it isn't our fault. The economic crisis has been caused by the inherent instabilities in capitalism triggered by the action of the banks. The banks are getting back to business as usual. The high street banks in this city and elsewhere declared £15 billion of profit in August, half of which they're giving bonuses to their directors and major shareholders. Lloyds Bank was mentioned, 43% owned by the taxpayer, did a deal to bring a Spanish new chief executive over for a £50 million package. Northern Rock, another one rescued by the government. A lad from Hillfields runs Northern Rock. He was going to get half a million pounds for six months garden leave sitting on before his next banking job. And then we got the Royal Bank of Scotland. £45 billion pounds of your money put in to rescue that bank. 83% owned by the taxpayer. And yet they've declared for 17,000 market traders Precisely the same people got us in this mess in the first place. They get £1.3 billion worth of Christmas bonuses. We not only need to nationalise the banks, we need to put those banks under the control after restructuring of ordinary working people so they get back to the jobs of lending us money for mortgages and keeping our businesses going, not engaging in speculation and gambling and bringing the economy to its knees. <laughs> Two points to finish with. I think we can beat the Tories and Liberals. 20 years ago they told us that the strongest Tory Prime Minister in generations had made a law called the poll tax and it could not be gainsaid, it could not be challenged. Well the people of this city and millions around the country refused to pay or delay their payment of the poll tax in a coordinated national struggle and within six months of the poll tax being brought in we not only moved the government, we removed the Prime Minister and Maggie Thatcher was gone. I knew Maggie Thatcher. David Cameron, you're no Maggie Thatcher. Hey. But I've heard the anger of a number of speakers. I've heard the fact that battles are inevitable, and they are. Resistance is inevitable, and it is. But rage is not going to be enough to get us through this battle. We need to have a strategy and a political alternative to replace what's been put in front of us with these cuts. And I want to make these last two points about that. Firstly, we've been here before. Two, or was it three? Two recessions ago, in 1976, the then Labour government called the IMF in, just like Ireland have called the IMF in, 
over the past couple of weeks. And they told us we had to make cuts in hospitals, in education, in welfare, in housing and in council spending. We had a council leader in Coventry called Arthur War Senior, one of the longest serving Labour councillors in this city. And in 1976, following a campaign by local people through the trade unions and the Labour Party at that time, Arthur organised a conference in St Mary's Hall for local authorities around the country and public sector unions and tried to get from Coventry a national campaign in defence of public services. I think we need that same resistance here now. So I've asked you to sign that petition I'm going to put to the council on Tuesday calling on this generation of council leaders to host a similar conference. I don't think Coventry can beat these cuts on their own. I'm realistic about that. But if all the local authorities got together with the trade unions, we could start to push the council back. And while they're doing that, and this is where I do have a difference with John, I don't think we should be raiding the reserves of the council in order to fund a 1,000 strong redundancy programme. I think we should be using the borrowing powers and the reserves of this authority to buy us time to get this campaign up and running so that no jobs have to be lost, so that no services have to be lost. And my last point is this, because you've been very generous in letting me have this last few minutes. What do we do if that doesn't work? What do we do on February the 15th when the budget report comes forward? What do we what do? We do? If, as I think is most likely, the three main national parties in this city, Tory, Labour and Liberal Democrats, will all vote for some form of cuts package on February 50. What do we do if we haven't got a big traditional party on our side? But what did the people at Kidderminster do ten years ago, when they were taking their hospital off them? When they were going to build a private hospital that they couldn't use, like they used the NHS in the past? and they couldn't get any support from the main three parties. They started one of their own. They called it health concern. They won two general elections with Dr Richard Taylor becoming the MP and they won 16 councillors. That's how they number down the country. In Walsall, in Wyandborough, in Wigan, in Huddersfield, in Coventry, in Lewisham, there have been independent councillors started. I want to put in front of you my very last point. As part of the strategy to defeat the cuts if the main existing parties will not guarantee either not to carry out the cuts or if they are re-elected to replace those services and those jobs lost in the cuts, then we need to form a new working class party rooted in the organisations of working people and our communities like Labour had to do 100 years ago to give us a sort of society so that the wealth that we created is spent on us our family and our services not down on the way and speculated by bankers and by capitalism. Thanks very much for listening.